Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are revisiting Jesse James and we're here at the James Family Farm to learn a little bit more about Jesse James' death and his family and we're going to visit his grave. His original grave is here on the farm but in 1902 he was moved to Mount Olivet Cemetery in Kearney, Missouri and stick around to the end because we are going to visit that grave as well. Now we've already visited the Jesse James home in St. Joseph, Missouri. And if you haven't seen that video, I will leave a link at the end of this video. And that's the house that Jesse James was shot by Bob Ford on April 3rd, 1882. And after I visited that site and then read some of the comments on that video, I started to think about some of the discrepancies that were present there. So I've come here to get some answers. So first things first, for those of you who do not know who Jesse James is, he was an outlaw from Missouri who started robbing banks in 1866. And he is reported to have robbed 12 banks, seven trains, seven stages, and a payroll office. And his gang was called the James Younger Gang. And he's also reported to have killed at least four men. On April 3rd, 1882, fellow gang member Bob Ford shot Jesse in the back of the head as he stood on a chair to straighten a picture. And this is the James family house, and it is in Clay County, and it was built in 1822. In 1845, the Reverend Robert James and his wife Zerelda and their infant son Frank moved to the farm. At that time, there was over 200 acres of land. Now there's only about 40. And Jesse James was born in this house in 1847. This is the James Family Bible, and I'm really sorry about the glare. It's turned to the birth pages, and this is Jesse's entry. It's over to the left, and it says, Jesse Woodson James, the son of Robert and Zerelda James, was born the 5th of September, 1847. And Jesse's father was a reverend and very instrumental in founding of the William Jewell College here in Missouri. In 1850, he went to California to mine for gold and to preach to the miners. Unfortunately, he got cholera and he passed away. Jesse's mother was named Zerelda Cole, and she was a very tall woman. She was over six feet tall, and in 1855, she married Dr. Reuben Samuel, and in 1861, federal forces came to the James Farm looking for information on the location of Jesse's older brother, Frank. They beat Jesse and repeatedly hung his stepfather from a tree in the front yard. They didn't kill him, but I imagine that they injured him pretty badly. It really is beautiful out here, but unfortunately this house is closed due to COVID and I tried to get some shots inside, but I have failed miserably. The screens on the door were just being hateful. So I'm going to show you some of the footage along with some of the photographs that were displayed just outside so we can get some kind of look. Now this is what they call Frank and Annie's room and the next room is the 1890s parlor. Now Frank, well, he was older than Jesse and he was also a part of the James Younger gang and a few months after Jesse's murder he turned himself into the governor. He only stood trial for two murders and was acquitted after that, he never went back to robbing banks, and he died here in 1915 at the age of 72. And we are on the west side of the house. Now take note, that chimney up there, that is original to this house. So that chimney is 200 years old. And we are headed in towards Zerelda's bedroom. And I was able to get a few shots through the glass, but we're going to have to suffice with this picture because of the glare. Sorry. And we are headed towards Jesse James' first grave, and he was buried here in 1882. And his mother had him placed here because it's just outside her window. She was afraid that someone was going to try to steal his body. And the tombstone, it's a replica, and it reads, Devoted husband and father, Jesse Woodson James, September 3rd, 1847, murdered April 3rd, 1882, by a traitor and coward whose name is not worthy to appear here. In 1902, the family had Jesse moved to Mount Olivet Cemetery in Kearney, and the guide told me that the family had purchased a very expensive coffin for Jesse, but when they removed it from the ground here, the bottom had rotted away and Jesse tumbled out. Those present said that he was fairly well preserved, but within minutes of being exposed to the air, he began to decay. The family had to purchase another coffin for his 1902 reinterment. 
So let's go back inside and check out some of the grave artifacts and finally get to the truth of some things that have been bothering me. Now this is Jesse James' original tombstone and it was moved with him in 1902 and souvenir hunters have chipped it away and they only left the base. What we're looking at is a piece that the family was able to recover. And this is a picture of his mother standing next to his tombstone and this is from the 1902 exhumation. And these coffin handles are from Jesse James' original coffin. The coffin handles we saw at the Jesse James home in St. Joseph, those were from his second coffin. Now here's the controversy. This is the tapestry Jesse was dusting and straightening and the feather duster and the chair he was standing on when he was shot. So when I went to the Jesse James home in St. Joseph, there was a tapestry hanging on the wall next to a hole in the wall. And the guide there said it was the original tapestry and the hole was from the bullet that killed Jesse James. But now I'm looking at another one that's supposed to be the real one. So I had a talk with the guide here in this museum and I believe that this is the real tapestry. And here's why. Most of the items in the museum are donated from family members. This was still their family home until the county bought it. And the house where Jesse James was shot, it's always been a tourist attraction. So what I'm trying to say that, of course they're gonna tell people that that's the real tapestry and that's a hole in the wall caused by a bullet. People want to see physical evidence of a crime. And that bullet hole, well, I now know that bullet never left his head. So I don't think that that hole was caused by a bullet. I really enjoyed visiting that site. It is still a historical place, but honestly, I would have preferred the bland truth over sensationalized lies. This bullet is not the bullet that killed Jesse James, but one he received during the September 1876 Northfield, Minnesota bank robbery. And it was found near his right foot and it came from a 38 caliber Smith and Wesson. Now I have no idea where the bullet that killed him is. If any of you do know, please share that in the comments because I am very curious at this point. What's in front of us are the remains of the original coffin. And now, like I said before, it was rotten and it had to be replaced. In 1995, the body of Jesse James was exhumed once again, and that coffin had to be replaced as well. And the remains of that coffin, that's what's on display at the Jesse James home in St. Joe. So he's on coffin number three, and I think he's gonna stay in coffin number three forever. I don't think they're going to exhume him again. Okay, we are headed back outside and we are looking at the outbuildings. In the distance, that is the slave quarters. And by 1860, the James family had about seven slaves. There's also a smokehouse and a carriage house on grounds. And on this side of the house, this is the original water pump. And the guy told me she thinks it still works. And now we are headed to the back of the kitchen. And it was here on January 25th, 1875, that Pinkerton agents who were looking for Frank and Jesse threw a bomb into the kitchen, a bomb. And it was kicked into the fire and it exploded. Jesse's eight-year-old half-brother Archie was killed and his mother Zerelda, she almost lost her right arm. It had to be amputated below the elbow. And the museum has this bomb on display. And we're gonna go check it out. So I don't know if I read it or if somebody told this to me or if it's even accurate, but my understanding is, is that the Pinkertons, after this fiasco, they stopped trying to find the James boys or at least backed off. I don't know. If any of you guys know, let me know. All right, before we go out to the cemetery where his current grave is, I wanted to go back inside and I wanted to look at this picture of Jesse James. It's one that I don't think that I have seen, but more importantly, it's the picture below of his kids. Look how stinking cute they are, especially his son. Now his son reminds me of someone and I cannot think of who it is. At first I thought it was Nicolas Cage, but that's not it. I just cannot figure it out. If you know who he looks like or if you have an idea, please let me know. It is driving me crazy. Okay, let's go on out to his current gravesite.
Okay, so you get <laughs> to this kiosk. I'm thinking it's got to be down this way. If you come to see this grave, that is the little kiosk up there. That is the little kiosk up there and just come straight down this way. is the grave of his stepfather Reuben Samuel and then next to that right over here that is Zerelda his mother and I'm curious does anybody know what that symbol on his tombstone means thank you guys so much for sticking with me to the very end and oh my gosh you guys we are almost at 5,000 subscribers and that is huge for my little bitty channel and I appreciate each and every one of you and I read your comments and I am just so appreciative of every one of you thanks for watching I will see you guys next week